and Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. I have a lot to share with you and so we're just going to get right into it and show you what I've got, um, what I think of as a stunning quilt. Um, and I can say it's stunning even though I've made this one. It was inspired by my mom as always. So many things are. So I've been back into quilting for the last um, three or four weeks. Um, so I, I go back from now my new, my new love of cross stitching to my old love of um, quilting and hand quilting and gardening. And I've been doing everything. Actually, I have not cross stitched I think in three weeks and I'm dying to get back into that. But I keep thinking, Oh my gosh, I'll just stay up a little later and a little later and um and that's not such a great idea always. So, we're we're going to share with you my quilting things that I have been into. So, I have notes to keep me on track and um let's let's just do it. So, I am I did a floss tube video the other day about what happened when the squirrel got out of the cage. And I also did a lot of tips and sewing room organization things that I had come up with because I did a floss too, which is really about cross stitch and I hadn't cross stitched in two weeks. So I shared tons of things that I have been into. I've been so inspired and enjoying getting my sewing room as organized and perfect as I can. And um, I've got everything pretty much organized and so then I'll get a project out and then I've got somewhere to put it away and then I go to work on one project especially on a weekend I go to work on one project and whoop, I pull something out and do that instead so that's what I did I was going to make a project bag and then instead I put some of my mom's orphan blocks together um, but here they are because this is all about just the things that we do as quilters and what I've been doing I inherited um, many, many of my mom's fabrics and um, and then her also her orphan blocks. So these are just flying geese. They were, whoops, they were all separate and I was going to lay them out in one way and then I did it another way. And then I also have been auditioning her plaids that I got a lot of plaids. So I have really been inspired by Carol Saltbox Stitcher who does a prolific cross stitcher and sharing lots of tips and just amazing things that she does but she's also a quilter and she was sharing a lot of the um, Americana 4th of July um, I love America kind of quilts knowing that Memorial Day is coming up 4th of July is coming up and so that's why I thought oh I really don't have any 4th of July or red white and blue quilts of my own so I thought this would be a fun thing to do and then I made a small project bag and I actually hand quilted it and then I couldn't find it before I did this video and my husband is off work today and when we are done we are going to the Rancho Santa Ana Botanical Garden um, and go for a walk so we're just gonna keep going through my list and what we've got doing um, then the other thing thinking about the 4th of July quilts that I would like to make I was pulling out some of my charm packs. I was looking for something for another project. Um, you know, I go from one project to another. That was the whole thing about the squirrel getting out of the cage. And I have this one charm pack that I got. This is an older one. It's Mill Book Series. I will share with you, I have two Mill Book Series pre-cuts. All I have is this charm pack, five inch squares. This one is um, circa 1889. You can still find them. Um, I did a Google search because I wanted to get some more of the, the other one that I'm going to show you in a minute, but I did see this one come up quite a bit, but it's, it's red, white, and blues. So, but not, not Americana kind of stars and stripes. Well, there were some stripes, but red, white, and blue and my red, white, and blue kind. So I was thinking, oh, what can I do with one charm pack? Because I'm not going to keep buying and buying more to go with that, even though I know I can. Um, I'm not going to. So I just pulled out this book and I started looking through it while I was just getting ready this morning. And I thought, oh, this actually might be good. Um, or maybe not, because 
we'll see we'll see but and this you can still this is recently um, put out so that I know you can still get because so many of the things that I have <clears throat> and the patterns that I share are I have because I've been out in the garden I've got some sinus issues and I can see because I can see these dark shadows on my under my eyes and that's not from lack of sleep that's that happens as a result of sinuses so I've got a frog in my throat Lizards in my garden, butterflies in my garden. Um, here's another one that I thought, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to make so many big quilts so I can finish, crank out um, some more quilts. And because I do hand quilting, it takes me a long time to get things done. This is still available. Um, Primitive Pieces by Linda, L-Y-N-D-A. This one is still available. Um, she has a lot of neat primitive patterns on her site. I have several of them. And this one, I thought, oh, that would be a fun one to do too. And maybe I can do that with bits and pieces from that charm pack. We'll see. Um, now, this quilt behind me. So you can probably see it's pinned. Yep, you can see. I pin based and then I hand quilt. So um, I get very involved in my fabric. So from start to finish, between planning, stitching, hand quilting, everything, I do it myself. And part of it is control and part of it is I, I like to work with my hands and I like to hand stitch. So this one is going to take a long time. And instead of like here, I'm going to hand quilt some continue, probably a cable. I do a lot of cable. So I will probably stitch some continuous thing up here just to hold it together. And this was a piece of fabric. This, this was the whole, I made these panels as wide as I could because this fabric is gorgeous. I bought it a long time ago and I only bought two yards and it was perfect for this quilt. I wanted to showcase this fabric instead of cutting it and piecing it up. It was something I bought Oh, um, at the beginning, so back in 06, 07, when I got back into quilting, I remember I got it on one of my trips to Peacemakers in um, Costa Mesa, Chula Vista, Costa Mesa. Um, so this was, um, it is, I've started, so maybe you can see I've started hand quilting, but when I go around these, I have to do a lot of turning and turning and turning and this is how I learned the hard way on a lot of things. I used way too much of the Roxanne's glue when I glued those fabric pieces down and stitching through that glue is not fun. And I'm not gonna get it wet to dissolve the glue. I'm just gonna mow through it, but I have to take turns because it's harder on my fingers. But the whole thing about me wanting to show this, cause I thought, no, I wanted to wait till it's done to show up. I thought, it may never get done. I've had it. I've had it hanging in front of my um, my closet for years, just as panels pinned, because it is more of an intense one. It was intense the whole thing to do, but I loved it, and I was totally inspired by my mom's. Now, old pattern. I was going to check to see if it's available, but I thought, no. Nope, remember, because I want to go for a walk with my husband. Um, so. This is the pattern, Peaceful Garden Path, pattern number 127, um, Cabin Fever Designs. Probably not going to be a, I, oh my gosh, I even have some of this fabric because my mom, it's Robin Pandolf. So um, Robin Pandolf is the designer of that. Hopefully it's available on the secondary market because it is a stunning quilt. Um, either way, but here's something funny. If I had seen it like this, I don't know those there's no contrast um, it, it would not have interested me but this is what my mom did so this is her quilt my sister owns it because when we divided up my mom's quilts um, I said um, this is yours because um, I have one in the works and so this is she used the extra pieces that she had and this is the backing. That's the backing. And ah, I loved it. it. Always inspired me. But this is my mom's quilt. And I remember um, this is laid out in my parents. They had a big, beautiful room that overlooked um, the Colorado uh, pasture land. It was gorgeous. 
but I remember the first time I saw that quilt and that's what really inspired me. Um, here's my notes. So I have, I have, I keep things all together. I've got all the, 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 the pieces that I used to do the hand applique. I've got, <laughs> who knows what I have written in there. So, um, I have all my, um, diary notes on what was going through my life when I made this and I have it, um, January, 2013. I just call this one birdhouse quilt and everything about this quilt is special to me. But I remember the trip that I made out to my mom when, or my parents, when she had made that quilt and I just couldn't get enough of it. And I remember we were looking at it. We were sitting in the, in their, in their big room, looking out the window, having coffee in the morning, looking at that quilt. And I just thought the dimension, because it really, I don't have one, I don't have one that I could show you, but it has three, this one has three layers. Some of them have many more layers than that. But the dimension, when you hand quilt around it, it gives it that dimension. And it, like this one has one, two, three, four pieces. Um, and it gives it an amazing dimension. It just makes it pop up off there. And I was so inspired. My mom said, take the pattern because she wasn't going to make another one. Take the pattern, go for it. And, um, it, it, it was one that I, I loved once I figured out what fabric I was going to use. I loved, and I even, she gave me some of her leftover cause she did thimble berries and she gave me that this is thimble berries. She gave me her leftover flowers, and so I incorporated those in there, and that one is stunning, and I'm not going to leave this hanging. I usually, I use those clips at the top, and I'm not going to leave this one hanging because all the, all the pins make it very heavy, and even when I was putting it up there, I could tell it was heavy, so it will be up there for today, maybe this week, but then I'm going to take it down, um, but I have a lineup of so many quilts that I need to hand quilt. So we'll see. We'll see how often we get to get this going. But I really, um, I wanted to share this because it's what's going on in my life as well. I have a native garden. I've, I've done gardening since I was a little girl, but I used to have a very English style garden. This, this was my thing. I had I had everything as, as it, like in England, they have a lot of rain. Allison, you know, they've got a lot of rain. Um, we don't have rain here in Southern California. It never rains in Southern California. So I used a lot of water for all the gardening that I did and all the roses that I did scarred up my arms, but I loved my garden and my husband and I made bird houses and we attracted birds to our garden and I bred birds. He made me um, big flights, aviary flights. So I have birds and um, I love birds and everything. So this, this was, so much a part of my life when my kids were growing up. That's when I was always out in the garden. And then I wanted to make life easier because I'm in my sewing room now all the time. And I have more of a native garden. So it doesn't take as much water, doesn't take as much care if I just keep the weeds going. And that's where, if I do close-ups, you're going to see I have a damaged finger here from my woodworking days. And I was using a glove that had a hole in it from my fingernails. And so my finger is very dirty. But I wanted to watch The Secret Garden. I, this is, this is, this just arrived yesterday because I had it from years and years ago. The Secret Garden was one of my favorite books growing up. And um, I dreamed of having a secret garden. I had a secret garden in my backyard that was amazing. Um, and then I wanted to watch it and our VHS player had broken and it was a VHS. So I just reordered it and it came last night. We will watch it tonight. And this, this is the only secret garden I watch. I, I have a lot of things like Pride and Prejudice, the A and E version, the older one. That's the only one. Um, Colin Firth, he is Darcy. There is no other Darcy. Um, that is the only Pride and Prejudice that I will watch, and I've watched it many times. I've listened to the book on tape. I've read the book, everything. This is the only Secret Garden version that I will watch. Um, so then there is another favorite video that I had, just showing you what what arrived with it. 
Um, I had shared in one of my videos about my love of Rosamund Pilcher books. And she has a book called Sh Shell Seekers. And I've read that several times. And I had the VHS version of this. And I loaned it out. And I lost, you know, it never came back to me. So there was a special with both of those together. And I will watch this one. I remember my husband watched this with me. And he really liked it. Um, so we'll watch these again. Um, he, he likes, he likes different type guy kind of movies, but when he wants to pull me out of my sewing room and I come hang out with him in the front room, that's usually his domain. And my domain is back here because he's watching stuff. I don't want to watch He'll say, Oh, you get to choose a movie. So that's what I'll do tonight. And I'll do some hand quilting, but let's just share as I have my notes, but we're going to share just just what I've got going. I love plastic boxes. This was just one someone gave me. A friend of mine gave me her whole bead collection because she can't see very well anymore. And it came in one of these boxes. It's a cool old box. But look at it. fits perfectly. This is what I was doing. So I I know that Rose Rosamund Pilcher, Kim Deal's book. She has a book that just was released um, early this month. And it will be in stores soon. Simple Whatnots 2. And I had seen on Pinterest, I had seen there is a, there is a quilt that a mini quilt that I, her simple whatnots are minis. I wanted to make it. And the cool thing was I had purchased at a store and it's sad, the store, um, the store closed down, a new one came in place of that. And now that one's closed down, but I had purchased and they were just store done. One, one inch strips of um, whatever that line of Kim Deal fabric that was out at the time. And you can see when they don't get pinked edges, this is what happens. But I knew when I saw this, this um, and I don't have the book yet, so um, I can't show you the pattern. But just looking at it on the Pinterest, I could see that I could do it with these strips. So whatever the pattern is, didn't matter to me because I wanted to use these strips. These were one inch strips. Um, so this is what I made. I took, I sewed all these took forever because they are tiny. So one inch, one inch cut strips make half an inch. And I, after making one log cabin quilt that I called my crazy pumpkin patch log cabin, where I, I was working through issues at the time and I, I wasn't going to measure. I didn't measure. And you can tell that's why I call it the wonky one, but I'm going to hide it with applique. Ever since that time, now I thought, if I make a log cabin, I'm going to nail it. And I'm so I measure, 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 measure. Boy, um, it took a lot of time, but I enjoyed it. So her, so this is, if you know Kim Deal and you look up Simple Whatnots too, you'll see this is on the cover. Now, I realized after I just tried to look at it and guess, this is the actual fabric that's in it. Um, I am sure I made this double what this size was, but I forgot. This has a seam allowance. This didn't. So I made this, um, like this was one inch. I think I made this, whatever it was, that block is going to be too big. So I, the, the applique flowers, there's, there's four flowers that are applique around here. I will just have to enlarge. I have a scanner, so I'll just get the pattern and I'll enlarge that pattern. So it fits appropriately, but it was very fun. And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning um, that it was good Friday. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and I couldn't get back to sleep. And I thought, I'm not fighting it. I'm just going to get up and sew. And, um, I, it was cool because, um, I woke up because I was just, I'm just very concerned about where our nation is heading and where the world is heading. So I just thought I'm going to do something positive. So I was stitching and then because it was good Friday and I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, I, um, I listened to our, I listened to church services, um, and I listened to worship music and it was, it was amazing. So get my eyes off of my worries and onto my Jesus who that day in history, Good Friday, that is the most historically documented day by anybody. Um, and then for me as a believer to listen to my pastor share and, and I listened to a lot of different things, um, it, it was very good, very good for me. So I stitched and I made my world perfect in the sense that I made these little blocks perfect. And I used my Kim Deal and I used to do this, 
um, I used my layer cakes. So I used the strips that I had of this and I used layer cakes um, to do this because you could do, I could do the 10 inch strips in that. So um, I love Kindle fabrics and yes, I did get my amazing haul from Fat Porter Quilt Shop when the Kim Deal, um, there were Kim Deal creams from her Butter Churn, I can, I can never remember what that is, Butter Churn Collection, um, and it was on sale for eight sixty dollars a yard, and I ordered, I ordered one yard cuts of like 23 pieces, so that, that was my haul. And it arrived, and it's gorgeous, but I had it all put away. It now has its own drawer, um, but these are these are just all all those pieces. So that is what, and, and if you know that piece, this is what those flowers are made out of. So I ordered a piece of that. So as I was, as I was sharing in my Floss 2 video about my new organization, I'm using trays, and I'm not going to go into detail because I talk in detail about that, but when I was doing this project, I had everything on the tray. And then the next day, I went to neaten it up and put it away. And I just had that, you know, there is that saying, no child left behind. Um, I always, and I see so many things with the wording. And as I was putting away, I just thought, I had all these scraps. And I had a lot of, I had a lot of these scraps. And I thought, no scraps left behind. No scraps left behind. And so I thought, well, they don't have to be left behind. I can do something with them. So I did. <laughs> but they were short little scraps. And so I did little tiny, but I, I had no idea. I just started putting them together. I had no idea how many I was going to make. And I thought, well, I could make them into coasters. Um, but I have four. So what I think I may do is do those as cornerstones, corner settings for that quilt. But whatever it was, no scraps left behind. Um, so So that's what I did. It, it was making me happy. Let's see if I can put this away and go down to the next thing. So um, let's just show what else. So my last quilting video, I shared everything, everything that I could about paper piecing that I have been doing. And I showed a block and it was only a partial block, but this is what I did last weekend. So I did this whole block it is the Lynn Graves Foundation paper piecing, and I shared all about that. Um, so, in doing this, I realized that the fabrics, I had several different jelly rolls, but I had one called um, Mill Creek, I'm sorry, I keep wanting to call it Mill Creek, Mill Book, because it was actually a book from a fabric mill. If, I read about it a long time ago, but... It was actually a book that was found that they reproduced those fabrics. So I keep thinking Mill Brook. And he, actually one quilt when I was searching for it, because it's an older one, um, a quilt store actually had it listed as that. But it is, here we go, um, Mill Book Series. There are no jelly rolls that I have found. I searched and searched and searched. There are no jelly rolls. There are a few yardage pieces that you can get. But there are no jelly rolls that I can find. There were several charm packs. I ordered them um, because this is the thing. I had a jelly roll and these are cut into one and a half inch strips. So I took that jelly roll and it was killing me because I thought, what am I going to do with those one inch strips? Because remember, no scraps left behind. Well, when you do these corner pieces, that one and a half inch, because the one and a half inch turns into this. Um, and so... I have, I have a, I've pulled a lot of my pre-cuts. I just had this thing about using pre-cuts right now. So I pulled a lot of my pre-cuts and I, so you can use charm packs. And for the centers, if you are very careful, you can use the mini charms. But, um, so the, the, the charm packs actually in the corners work actually fine and I'm gonna I'm gonna narrow I'm gonna do it smaller because there was some waste and, and I just don't like waste so I'm gonna cut a one inch strip out out of that center so I can do those corners but it's stunning um I keep these these this is why I do this because I do this because it pleases me I have wanted to make a quilt and I searched on pin when I look on pin I love Pinterest there is um Secret Life of Mrs. Meatloaf I think was 
something that I pinned and she had a blog and this is basically the colors of the block that she had made and I thought I'm going to make something as close as I can to those colors with my style of fabrics. Well, as I cut up the jelly roll that I had from last time, I realized I don't have enough reds and browns. So I had to break into that mill book series. I had to break into this one, even though I didn't want to because I wanted to save that. I had another quilt planned for that. But I thought, I, I want to make this the way I want to make it. And so... I am, and that's why I ordered, because I, I kept thinking I'm not going to order any more fabric, but I need I needed to for those corner pieces. So this, this is the paper, and this is why, and I am going to make the 12 inch. So anyway, that's what I did, but it, it was kind of wonky. I did get, um, I was trying to use my, just my regular sewing foot, my quarter inch foot, and since my friend Judith had given me this foot, um, I did use it, but it almost feels like it's ice skating across there because as you're sewing, this doesn't, the feed dogs don't really grab this and that presser foot just felt like it was skating. So I, I had to do it slowly and carefully because it seemed to want to go off track, but as you're folding it over, it kind of self corrects. So, um, so that's my thing, but it, it was killing me to, um, cut up more and more of these strips into the one and a half inch strips from that two and a half because I know I'm not going to use all these. I will have leftovers, but now they're going to have to be narrower leftovers. So I love my fabric. I don't like wasting a tiny bit. I am a scrappy quilter, so I will find things to do with that. And honestly, now that I've really gotten into paper piecing, the pineapple block that I'm going to share with you next that I got into um, this, this Lori Holt one, it's so Emma, this pineapple block and, and smaller ones, a smaller log cabin, the pineapple block can use narrow strips. So, so this is a really great one for using those little strips. So in, in all that, this is what else I've been up to. Um, so again, this was my tray. I went back to buy more at Hobby Lobby and they were all gone. There are other bright ones available, but this is the one I liked. I had cut up a whole, it killed me. I had a whole jelly roll of this one, Flower Garden um, Gatherings. I've been saving this um, from Primitive Gatherings. I've been saving it and I cut up. I thought, I've had this for years. Just just do it because I'll use it in that quilt. I found this was, this was not the right tone that was going to work for that, for that pineapple block. Um, and so I thought, darn it, I already cut it up. What can I do with it? Well, I've got this. This was something I've shared in my floss tube. And this was a, a free block available on um, Lori Brecklin, Not Forgotten Farm Blogspot. So it's like farmhouse, not forgotten dot blogspot dot com. I will, um, I will put that in the, the show notes, but I wanted to make a wall hanging out of it. So I, I was trying to think, well, what can I do? And then I thought, wow, this, this, this would be cool to use as the lighter strips. Where did I just put that? To use for the lighter strips here and then to use really dark reds and dark browns. And I thought, oh, I'll pull the, the mill book one. And I thought, no, you got it for that. So we'll see. Maybe I'll use scraps, but um, I will use really darks for here. So... That's something I thought, well, that way I can use, I can use all these precious ones that I stripped up for that. And we'll see if that works. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to share is from that quarter shop. I did get, is that going to reflect too much? Here? Um, I did get this. So I got the Carol Dokes foundation paper. So it is just a hundred sheets of very thin, easy to rip, um, paper that you can put in your printer and print um, foundation blocks that that you want to print. So that's one thing that I'm going to do because now I really, really am enjoying um, foundation paper piecing. So now here is what I made from, from those. I had shared in my last video about these were all separate. So 
as I'm doing this, hopefully my belly is not showing. <laughs> as I'm doing this, um, let me hold this up. This, this, I guess this would be the easier way to hold it up. Nope, because that way you can't see me. Um, and I don't want to get my lipstick on here. So you'll notice that those center ones are red and the outer ones are white. So that's why I've named this quilt um, White Chocolate Covered Cherries because this is how I had it laid out and that's what I decided. And I, I wanted just to do a small quilt, but I shared that I realized, I shared in my last video that I realized that red, it was not supposed to be dark in the center, it was supposed to be light. And so this is the size that I got. So this will probably be a table topper or a little lap quilt um, or maybe to hang on my wall but um, I'm hand quilting it and log cabin blocks, things with straight lines are very fun to hand quilt because you, you just go with it. So I started, I laid this out last night, I pinned it and I just thought, oh, I wanna just get it going so that way I can show you a little bit about my hand quilting. I haven't asked, can I do a hand quilting tutorial? I'm, I am so bad at doing tutorials, so I call them tutorials, not tutorials. And I would, I would like to figure out how I can do one eventually, but for now, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm simply gonna show you, this is my Valdani size eight pearl cotton. That's what I, I choose to hand quilt with. So these were some of the blocks that I did. So let me share one thing as well. So if you noticed, the, the Lori Holt, and I know some of this will be repeat from my last one. Where did I just put that? Um, oh, good grief. Yeah. Well, the typical pineapple block, hopefully you can just remember or re rewind a little bit. This last piece is supposed to be the bigger and darker, so it's supposed to have, um, let's find one that was, yeah. So it's supposed to have this color all the way travel through, not supposed to, traditionally, and this one is gonna be larger. So technically you've got the darks and the lights. Um, however, however the layout is, whether it starts dark and then it's light and dark concentric circles. Well, that the purpose, the reason that I wanted to make these blocks the way the design, I can't even find where that one is. Um, the design that Lori had laid out was like this, so that it was light and it ended small light. And I thought, there is a design element there that I wanted to see. This creates a secondary design element. So when she did that layout where instead of this being one whole piece and she made that a small piece, I laid it out and it's like, I wanna give that one a try. So you have two design elements kind of funny because actually this is a third one with that being dark but if you just did them like this you could see there's two design elements and so when I hand quilt the the neat thing about hand quilting is um, you can accentuate what you want so to contrast when I was looking at did I really want to buy that simple whatnots two book um, there is a lot of quilts in there. It's like, eh, I don't think I would make those. And then I was trying to see, cause I was just looking at it on Amazon and you can make the image bigger so you can kind of see. There's one quilt that she had done and it was hand quilted in such a way, uh, sorry, it was machine quilted in such a way that I felt it took away from the design of that quilt. And I couldn't really see what the design was. When I actually get the book, it's going to be great. But that's the difference is sometimes in machine quilting it can take away from the design element but then another design comes into that it's just what you like the way my eyes look at things i like to accentuate the design so since lori designed it that way i wanted to see how i could hand quilt to accentuate this and so I just I just use my fingers and it probably isn't going to help that I I did the darker one first. But this is this is what I do. I travel with my fingers and I figure can I cuz I want to do continuous as much as I can. So I start here and I quilt or yeah, I stitch 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 and then I go under and where do I go? Okay. Um then I go under and I go here. 
and then I stitch stitch so now this creates because of the curve or the extra line it creates something a little bit different there 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 and I get here and then what do I do and then I'm gonna go over here and and I was doing it I'm not gonna explain it very well because both I don't have my glasses and I'm trying to get going so I can go for a walk with my husband the next one I do I will have this all done hopefully and I can really explain it better but as I was when I was doing this I had to really focus on what I was doing but what I did was I created so I like to stitch where there is no seam allowance so to create this part so it popped out all you do is stitch on the other side of an element that you want to bring out or like so technically I should have stitched on this so I stitched on this side because that's the seam allowance is here I stitched here and technically I could have stitched on this side but that's where a seam allowance is so because you're always folding the seam allowance up so what I did is I stitched here I stitched there but still it makes it accentuates that a little bit more because I had stitched it a different way and it wasn't accentuating that so I was stitching as I was focusing on something else and this is the first pineapple block that I've actually completed and will be hand quilting because the log cabin block is so you just go round and round and round so much easier so I messed up because here's what I did I don't want you to copy this because I want you to buy yours on from it's so Emma but this is what I had to do I actually I I scanned it I printed it out and I laid it next to my quilt that I had done the right block because I was getting so confused um, but you can kind of see why so stitch 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 then over here but see there are lines that are not done there's only really one line that is not done but if you get off which I did and I had to undo some it changes it changes the look of what's going on so it was kind of confusing, but that was the way that could keep me on track, but hopefully it will help you see how I hand stitch in the sense of what goes through my mind as I'm trying to figure out how I want to hand quilt that project. Um, and as I learn things more and as I get more things figured out, I'd love to figure out how to do one where you can actually see what I'm stitching. I'm not there yet. I'm lucky to be here in front of you right now. This is the other thing that I do because I get very squirrely is I will like I could put that away and maybe not touch it for years. Hopefully I won't. But I wanted to choose. I chose the backing and I wanted to choose the binding. I was going to do a border. It was already so wild. The border, any border, no matter how plain, just didn't do me good. So I chose this as it's kind of wild, but I chose this as a binding. So, you know, you're not going to see very much of it, but it was, it was perfect colors. So this, this is what I did. I just do scratch. So now I've got this and I have a place for all my, all my, um, bindings that I do, whether I fully, but I thought I'm not going to prepare it in case I change my mind later. It's just sitting there waiting for me. Okay. As I was doing the Lynn Graves, because you're working, and remember I shared a lot of stuff on my last quilting video about the paper piecing in the Lynn Graves. As you are doing that one, it's opposite. You work from the front of the paper rather than the back. And when I was going from one thing to another, it was like, whoa. Um, what do I do? And then I was reading the directions, and so she suggested you get seven inch ginger shears because you're going to pick them up and instead of like usually you would cut this way the way that you do it it, it is weird and i i don't plan on doing any more of the lynn grave stuff my mom had bought two and that's why I thought, i'm just not going to do this i'm going to get the the Lori holt has the 12 inch paper piece blocks i thought i'm just going to buy those and i thought my mom gave me these. My mom bought them. I've got them. Let's just figure it out. So I did. Um, and i that's why I wanted to make that block because I thought, do I really want to do these? So I ended up, I bought these scissors. I found them. Here's something interesting. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I was, I'm a sale shopper. Um, these are Ginger scissors. 
And if I'm going to buy a pair of scissors, I know there are better quality available. I'm a Ginger girl. Um, these were the first pair of scissors, not this. My eight inch ones. These. These were the purse, purse, first pair of scissors that I ever purchased. Um, I learned how to sew when I was 16 because I got a job at a fabric store. And my mom taught me how to sew. And in my all my earnings, I bought a good pair of scissors. But you can see they're old, they're damaged. Um, but um, I will share. I sent them in at one time to get them reworked. But I, I don't know if that's still available. But when they came back, they were beautiful. They were like new. So this was this is usually how you would use your scissors. These are these are my fabric only scissors. Um, and so I thought, well, why do I need a seven inch pair? Surely I can do it with the other one. But the way she was explaining it, you pick it up and you, you actually trim this way. And I tried it with the eight inch and it was awkward. The seven inch was better, but I wanted to share about Ginger scissors since I have this collection and I, I do love Ginger. And so I'm, that was 40 years, 41 years ago. I'm 57. So if I bought these when I was 16, these are very old. I'll have these till I die, unless I lose them. Um, but they're great. I don't ever need another eight inch pair of scissors again, because I've got this one, I've got it organized and I use it. So that's why I'm a Ginger girl. But I did find those seven inch ones. I, I paid less than $30 um, for that seven inch pair of scissors. Um, and I was able to pick it up that day too. So. Anyway, this is a pair of Ginger scissors that a friend of mine gave to me. So these are Ginger um, six inch applique scissors. So that night that I made that block was the day that I bought those seven inch scissors. Cause that's why I thought if I pay for those scissors, I'm going to make that block. Technically I could have used these in, I could have used these without buying that pair of scissors. So I bought something on sale, but I could have not bought it because technically I could have used these. I don't know how to use these with applique, so I'm going to watch a YouTube video to see maybe the applique that I don't, that I do wouldn't use those scissors, but they're cool. They're beautiful. They were a gift and it was a special time from a special friend that I got those. So I love those. Now these are scissors that I use all the time. So these are gingers. These are five inch. Oh, what did they call these? I wrote it down because they had funny names for them. So dress shears are the larger ones. Dressmaker shears, applique scissors was the other one, sewing scissors. So you can see this is a bent tip. So a neat thing about this is when you want to trim something and if you want to trim something without poking through and you use these, it's going to be a hard thing. But like I have bought, like there was Walmart had these camisoles that I, they were like three bucks and I bought every single color, but it had that inner bra shelf, whatever. The inner bra thing, it wasn't doing me any good. So, cause I'm not going without a bra. Um, anyway, I wanted to cut that out. So I would always cut that out really carefully with this. And so these work for a lot of different things, but this is the perfect size. And I do this with my, um, applique and I, there's something that I do where I actually cut paper with it. And, and again, the, a good quality pair of scissors, will be okay, but that's what these are designated for. So these are five inch. Then I got these from my mom who said she thinks these were my grandma's. These are four inch embroidery scissors. So these I love all the time. Um, so those are my gingers. And then I just, this is where I shared in my floss tube video about organization. I just, I had had this for about two years or a year. Actually, I know a year and a half. I had just had this and I, th I thought it, fell off my sewing machine table into the trash can. And that's where now somebody has, several people said, why would you put your trash can below your sewing machine? Um, cause everything jiggles off onto it. Well, yeah. So I thought I learned the hard way, but I found these, these are awesome too. So these are great to use on your sewing machine. They were with my beading stuff because they're also great to use snips, um, for snipping leather and, um, they're good quality. So that's what I've done and, and it hasn't hurt them, but these are awesome. And now I found them. So these are, these are gingers as well, but those are called, it's funny. Those are called, um, where is my, um, four inch thread snips. So when I find more about that repair, because I do have, I want it, those, those eight inch scissors need to go in for repair. Um, 
So if I find that out, I will share with you on that. I was at, um, when I was at Joanne's that day, picking up my scissors, um, I found they had um, these iris boxes on sale half price. These are the five, so these ended up being like $2.25. So these are the five by seven photo boxes. And I had shared in a video that I did all about threads, about how I use them for my RFL threads. So, and and there, there are a lot of different RFL of this size. This is the, this is the 80 weight um, that I use for hand applique. They fit nicely. I can get 18 in here. And so I bought a couple more because for $2.25, um, they're not always easy to find. And I only like the iris one because they nest into each other. And, and here's something I figured out because this is not full and they were always getting all messed up there. And so I just, I had some wool, so I put it in there so they didn't get messed up. Um, and they stayed where they would be. But as in my organization, I have a little spot, but I want to keep all my like orphan. These are all my, my charm packs pieces that I haven't used from a specific pack. So either I will keep them all together with that line that I bought or, but I, I didn't want these to get lost. So, so I found in my closet, whoop, this fit perfect, and that's what I see. So I see that there's charm packs in there. So um, tips and tricks along the way. Let's have a drink. Let's have a drink. Okay. I named, I like to name my quilts. So um, I'm looking at my notes. And so since I, since I named that one quilt white chocolate covered cherries, the other one reminds me of chocolate. Like I, I, I think in chocolate. That's how I, I think. I think in chocolate and coffee and food. So I've called it dark chocolate covered cherries is the, the other pineapple quilt. Um, now, I'm looking at what I still want to share and we're doing okay. So in the last video that I did, I turned the my iPad so that you could see the quilt on the wall hanging behind me. And I, this is my sister, so I do not want to get my lipstick on it. But I wanted, as I took it down, I thought, oh, they need to see this too. So this was my sister's version of the, um, the Valentine's Day quilt. So if you want to learn more about that, please pop over and check that other one out. You can scroll to the very end to see hers. But this is, this is her quilt. And I love her one of these. This is the paw prints that she has of her, her fur babies that are no longer with her. But it's neat because as I took it down, look at the backing. I love these backings. This is how she wanted to not, you know, no scraps left behind. This is what she did. So she pieced her whole entire back from quilt piece, quilt fabric that she used on the front. And this is how I realized, because sometimes I'll look at my fabric and I'll think, did I buy that or did I get that? This, this piece, I have some of this left. And this is in my Valentine quilt. And that's probably why my sister gave some to me. But it was just neat to know. <clears throat> and then I have some of this I was going to make into a project bag. Um, twelve. So I just wanted to share that with you. <clears throat> oh, poor Riley gets nervous. He's laying on the couch right there. I just tossed that over there. But last video, I almost hit him with a box. He moves fast for a small dog. Um, okay. So I had a project bag. Where is it? Okay. I made a project bag that I shared in my floss tube video that I just did. So if I run out of time, um, no, let me just show that. Okay. It's in my basket. Okay. So I knew I had these scraps and this was about, this was where I came up with, I let the squirrel out of the cage. Anyway, I did a box bottom. I did this, but these were scraps that were left over that I knew were somewhere. Um, so this is the quilt from that. And I, I started on that video. I forgot it was floss tube and I was sharing more about the quilt. And I thought, Oh, Oh, that's where I remembered. Oh, that's another quilting video. So this is the quilt that I want to share with you. Um, but I didn't want to have this one up on the wall because it has a front and a back. So this is, Oh my word. Where did I put that book? I will, this is an older book and um, 
and I could probably figure out how to pause on my iPad, but I don't want, I don't want to make a mistake. I will put the book, it's actually in two books. I will put it in, um, in the show notes. So I want to say it's cabbage rose, something like that. Um, but this is the front and this is the back. So I did a pieced back. This was at the time that I was a new quilter and I wanted to conserve my money. And I thought, oh my word, if I have two quilts in one, that'll save money. And, and it was fun. Um, and I love, I, I love that this is a double sided quilt. So, but I knew I had a lot of these pieces left over and that's where I made the project bag and I have two more that I'm going to make. Now, in that floss tube I was sharing, this, this was, uh, my sister had gone to either a quilt retreat or her quilt guild and learned how to make this block. I could not find it to tell you what it is. I don't know what the designer was or maybe someone there made it up. I don't know, but I do know there's turning 20 quilts. There are, um, magic nine patch quilts. There, what is the other one? Um, Yellow Brick Road by Terry Atkinson. So there are tons and tons of quilts like this where you just have basically two or three different blocks and you just keep turning them and putting them together. If you Pinterest, there's, there's tons of them there. But this is, this is kind of a neat one to share with this one as well because this when I was, this was one of my first quilts. So when I was new to making quilts, I did the applique, but see, scratchy, scratchy, it's completely flat, scratchy, scratchy, and that's because it has the fusible, this is the fusible stuff, um, the steam seam. Now there's, there's different things that are, that are different and available, but um, this was flat, no dimension at all to it. But it's kind of cool in that, I did the primitive stitching kind of on the edge with my DMC, um, but this this was how I appliqued. These were the colors that I worked with. So I saw myself changing as a quilter. Now, um, the two stories behind this. Um, let's see. One, I I wanted to figure out how to hand quilt this, and. Um, I'll tell you why these are wonky in a minute, but I just drew out. So I don't know if you can see on this one, but I drew a flower. So it's a flower and I, I just, I just did big loops, but I made a pattern somehow and did that. Um, and I know when these videos get long, I just get so tired. I can barely talk. It seems. Um, but the other thing about this is when I had made this block, I was really working and it, it's simple. It's a simple nine patch, but it's neat because it's rectangular um, instead of a plain square. So I really enjoyed it, but my arm's getting tired, so I'm going to put it down now. When I did this, because there was some kind of fuse, whatever was on there, there was like a fusible thing that I wanted. I wanted, it was water soluble. And whatever product I used at the time, I wanted to dissolve it. And so I put that quilt top in the washing machine on cold and just let it gently do its thing and then I was going to lay it flat and let it dry. Big learning lesson. It took one of my first quilts that I was so proud of how perfect each one of these blocks were. I nailed the corners. They were perfect. They were precise. Well, not when I took it out of that cold water wash. Well, the thread, the cotton thread shrank in cold water. And it turned that into really wonky. And I laid it out and I thought it, it was a deciding moment because my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law were going to come over and I didn't have long. And I, I just thought, what am I going to do? I took a perfectly good and at that time expensive for me quilt top and I ruined it. What am I going to do? I just started getting mad and I thought, heck, this is my hobby. <laughs> I'm doing this for fun. So let's just get over it. And 
as I was spreading it out, so I, I kind of spread it out as it was drying and I helped make it less wonky. That was a deciding moment for me because I thought, I am not going to let this hobby be a source of angst in me. So I just thought, learning moment. My dad always had a saying, let me, just a minute, the sinus stuff is happening. Um, my dad, oh, there you get to see that quilt. <laughs> My dad had a saying, or he still does, but he said, if you can learn from your own mistakes, you're smart. If you can learn from somebody else's mistakes, you're even smarter. Well, I decided to learn from my own mistake, and that was the last time I did that. But I still remember that moment. I still remember laying that out and thinking, okay, Bonnie, what you going to do? So here we go. No scraps left behind. So I found these. Um, so these are all the little scraps and more flowers. That's why I used these flowers in that Valentine's quilt. And as I was separating lights and darks, because I thought, oh, what can I do with those? Well, that six inch pineapple block is great for using little tiny pieces of things. Is this gonna fit on there? Maybe not. And then I'll just choose a smaller block. But I thought, eh, I could give it a go. Because it, it is, I have this fascination right now with scraps, but I'm going to determine what can I do with these little tiny scraps. That's me. That's what I like doing. Um, let's see. Yep, I'm going to just do it. Okay, so I have a quilt that my mom and I worked on together. Um, we called it Quilt Camp, and I would go out to see her even when she... She couldn't quilt on her own, but she could quilt when someone came out with her. So this is that same... Oh, that's why I wanted to share it. This is the same block from the backing of that quilt, bigger. So it had two options, smaller and larger. So again, um, I think the best one, if you wanted to try to make something like this, that best one is probably that yellow brick road or turning 20. So these were pieces that my mom had picked out from her stash, and I think she had actually gotten a lot of scraps from her quilt guild. And this was one that we worked on together, and she did the binding on. I left it with her when I left that trip, but that day that I was gonna leave, I wanted to get it hand quilted. I am not, I am not an experienced hand quilter. And, I mean, sorry, machine quilter. I wanted to get it machine quilted so it could be done. Um, and I'm not experienced, but I had taken a class, and I thought, okay, this is for mom. She's, she's gonna be happy if it's done. So she lay down and took a nap because she was supposed to rest. And I sewed and sewed and sewed and sewed. And it, it was fine. It was done. I really should have used a lighter thread, but I probably used whatever mom had. And it was so fun because I would say, Mom, are you, you're not going to be able to sleep while I'm sewing. She goes, no, I'm fine. I'll be able to sleep. So it was just like a little kid. But she wanted, she just wanted to be with me. So this, this was the hand quilting machine I think hand quilting this was the machine quilting that I did and it would have been fine if I just left it but see a darker thread would have been so much better well when I inherited it from my mom I thought I can't stand that quilting I can't stand it so I have spent <laughs> I took it apart so but I love the quilt um but I I I have had this up at the cabin and that was my thing that I would do in the evenings or outside was I took it, I took all that hand quilting off, but you can see it's going to go through the wash when it's done, but not before. But what I am doing is I am doing like crazy stitch quilting with anchor pearl cotton thread because um, I have a lot of different colors. I'm doing all these just different stitching and it, it is absolutely taking forever, but it it's fun, but now I have so many other projects that I'm doing. So I'm thinking, how can I do this a little bit faster? But it's really thin batting. Mom did not like thick batting. So you can see there are a lot of places that do not have the stitching, yet there's a lot of places that do have the stitching. And then there are some where I'm going to have to really work to get that tiny stitching out. So that's it. But it is, it is nice. It is, um, it's a fun special memory for me to have, but it was a lot of work to put it together, to undo it and put it back together again, especially the way that I'm doing it. Now I have done a whole embroidery, two embroidery videos, 
And I knew that I had this book. My mom gave me this book. It's not a reproduction. It's, it's an old one. And she actually purchased it at the store. And it was, she said, it, it was so funny. They sold it to me for 29 cents. Um, so whether it was a mistake or not, but this is an old book and she was so excited that she got it for 29 cents. Um, so it, this has, this has tons of stitches. There are so many books available and, um, I wanted to show you some of those books that are available because I knew I had these because I used to work at that up at the cabin and I knew it's like, I know I have these books, but where are they? So if you're at all interested in doing a quilt like that, this is, this one is still available. Um, this is a gorgeous book. I, I simply love looking at all the pictures in here. Tons of embroidery. Um, this guy did it based on, it is such a neat book. He did it based on some, it was like a story of something that he found this, this lady up in an attic, it's not a lady, it's a mannequin, with this outfit and he redid it. I got to reread the story because it was truly fascinating. So I think I picked this up at Joanne's on their one of their sales, but I love those colors. I love it. Um, here's another one that I had purchased, Joanne Moulet, um, from a store that was not, it's not in the store anymore, but this is more of a, um, so jam, there you can see some information. You should still be able to get these on the secondary market, but just really neat. And I got to see her actual quilt. I got to see this one. So um, crazy quilting is neat. Um, then then this, uh, I'm not going to share every single thing with you. Um, so, oh, here was something kind of cool. I, you can just, so it's so great, so cherished, and it's, paper I paid 20 bucks for this and I haven't used it um, it's paper that you can actually lay on top and stitch on top but I pretty much got it just because I wanted I wanted to figure out how to do these stitches but anyway a lot of fun stuff a lot of stuff that you collect and you may not use but I'm really trying to figure out how to use things that I've collected how to enjoy what I've got that's what really that that Floss 2 video was on. And even if you're not a cross stitcher, that one was pretty much more, it was about organizing your sewing room, using the concept of simplicity. And, but it was really for setting up a sewing room for someone who quilts. So if you're a quilter, that one, and you're not a cross stitcher, that would be a good floss tube to watch. What was that number? That was, I have my books of everything that I do. That was floss tube number 20. So very much worth watching. So I think that was it. Um, I hope to have this one in the works soon and done soon. Now for the good stuff. So this is for those of you who like to stay to the end and hear my faith journaling, my, my walk with Christ. Um, this is that part of it. And um, I was just thinking, I always think, okay, Lord, what do you want me to share with the people? And what do you want them to hear? And then it's also, I think of it more as faith journaling because it's what have I been walking through and how has God been walking with me in it? And I want to get more where I'm... <laughs> the thought of God walking with me is awesome. But kind of tied in with what I shared at the end of that floss tube, he's got a plan for my life. I want to keep my eyes fixed on him and I want to follow his path so that's been, that's been kind of, that's actually the verse. There's this, this is my, my precious book that I have. And I usually have it open to this page. It sits in my bathroom. So I see it while I'm getting ready. And there's, there's a lot of verses from Proverbs 16 here, but what, I don't even need my glasses for it. A man's heart, or maybe I do. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I think of that verse all the time. And as I'm trying to work through something in my mind, I keep thinking, okay, Lord, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I, I have an idea of. But if you've got a better plan for me, please tell me. But I, I need to move forward and change my direction um, if, if I'm not doing what's lined up with you. So I'm trying to always do what's lined up in his word. And I have his Bible and I have his word so I know what he wants me to do. And he doesn't want me to go to the right or to the left. 
but to walk on his path. But, you know, sometimes there's things in life, like even this floss tube, Lord, do you want me to do this? Um, and if you do, what do you want me to say? And that's how I, that's, that's why I do this, because I really believe that just like Esther for such a time as this, he created me and he built within me my different passions and love of creation and gardening and my fingers are happy when they're in the garden or when they're stitching or they're wrapped around a cup of coffee or chocolate. But, but those are things that is created within me. So for such a time as this, I'm in front of you right now sharing his word. So those, those are the things that I think about. So as I'm thinking about the world right now and where we as the United States are heading, um, almost all the policies that have come into play since January 20th are, are, are things that I see opposite of what the Bible would want for us to do. Um, that's the way I see it. Things, policies that are put in place, especially if you really know what's in those policies, not what they tell you is in those policies. Anyway, things are, things are coming into play that are, are not making me happy. And, and there's something that I learned when we did homeschooling, we worked with, um, curriculum and, and tons of stuff from a place called Answers in Genesis, which is taking creation and science and putting them together. Um, and they talked about something called worldview glasses and, and that really has stuck with me, um, where you either have glasses that you put on with your, your worldview and it's either man decides truth or you have the glasses of God decides truth and everything that you see is that's your filter. We have a lot of filters in our life, whether we want to admit them or not, or whether we know that they are there or not. I analyze myself all the time. Um, see, I save money going to psychiatrists because <laughs> I analyze myself all the time. So I do fabric therapy and thread therapy, but I'm analyzing myself all the time and I'm thinking, okay, so if I've kind of gone wacko, what does God have for me in, in my life? What, what, what do I need to do here? I'm getting older. All I want to do is be in my sewing room. What does God have for me? And I have those verses in my mind. I actually looked them up because I wanted to share with you what was actually that verse. But I, a lot of times when I get, when I'm trying to decide what I need to do, or if I'm doing a project, um, and I kind of came up with this when I had to do school um, about 20 years ago. I didn't, I did not enjoy it a bit, but I would think I would get all kind of off on a rabbit trail and I think, okay, what was the, what was the purpose of this project that we were supposed to do? And so I've, I've kept that a lot in life. What is, what is the purpose of what I need to do? What is the purpose of this video? Um, what is the purpose? So as I was thinking, what is the purpose of my life, God, right now? What is the purpose of my life? And then I was thinking, God has a verse for me in that. Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly and love mercy? I had most of that in my, in my thought. Oh, that's not it. See that I only remembered part of it. And what does the Lord require of you and me to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God? So that's the purpose of what I need to do. And then in that whole thought, so that's where I'm thinking, okay, in this changing world, um, what, 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 where do I need to be? What do I need to do? What do I need to stand for? Um, what could that cost be? What, what do I do, God? So I'm thinking all those verses all the time. Then I was listening to our service this morning at home. Um, and Pastor Jack from, um, I have now a playlist of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. So I've been putting some things on the playlist. Um, but he was talking about the verse, or was it, I listened to a lot of stuff. So maybe it was from a, a, a week or two ago. Um, but he talked about the verse. It's Isaiah 5.20. Um, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Um, he has shown you. Okay, so let me start over again. I put these, I squished my notes in. So Micah 6, 8 started out with, 
He has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And then it says, and what does the Lord require of you? So there it goes. So that's where I thought, okay, God has shown us what is good in his word. That's where I thought, oh, I got to share this other one. So woe to those who put darkness for light, light for darkness. Um, and then it, where it says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. So if we put those three things together, that he, he has told us what he wants for us. He has shown us what is good and what is evil. And what the world tells us in whatever place you get your information from out there, people are saying things that I know, okay, you're saying that's good, but I know God's not saying that's good. And you're saying that's evil, and I know God is saying that's good. So we have to decide. So then I thought, I got the world view. God decides truth or man decides truth. So that's my challenge for you. Look to God's word to find truth. Finding truth is hard. I know where God's truth is. And if I'm going to take God's truth and look out at this world and hear the different things that are being said or done or whatever, and I have to make a determination on what I feel about that or what I'm going to do if the world tells me I'm doing something that's evil and God tells me it's good and I have consequences from that, who, who am I going to, who am I going to listen to even if I have consequences from the world? So that's, that's my filter. I'm putting my God glasses on. So, um, there you go. Um, those are, those are, that's a lot of stuff that I shared with you. So um, God bless you. Um, may you choose joy nevertheless. And I'm going to go walk in a garden with my husband. Thank you guys.